Hey guys, in this video, me and the boys circle around the new Speed UTV. We take a look at El Jefe and see what it's all about. We check out the doors, the interior, the exterior, the suspension, and kind of give our thoughts. And um, in the video, we also talk to Connor from Speed UTV. He gives us some more details because he's an expert on the uh, machine. And also, at the very end of this video, I'm going to give you guys my opinions on what I think about the new Speed UTV. Is it good? Where it fits in with the industry? How is it compared to an X3 or a Pro XP? And uh, is it going to be successful? So we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. As always, if you're new, subscribe. And make sure you like this video for the algorithm to push those views up and get us going see ya all right what's up guys we're back at the speed utv uh section of the sancho we're gonna look at the new speed utv and more in depth uh they got a rzr and a can-am on display so you guys can see the differences as far as the uh, length and whatnot but we're gonna look at the cars kind of peek underneath and see what we see So we're at the back of the bed, a huge bed, I'm sure. I don't know how you open this. Is this open right here? Mind if I look? No. That one don't open either. That's locked. Yeah. They probably locked. Okay, that's, that's the problem. They said they fixed already. Yeah. Apparently. But anyways, open this door first. Yeah. This what's cool is this is a regular door as far as how it opens, and this is a suicide door. Check this out, dude. Or not? It was a suicide door. We don't gotta open that one. But well, what's cool about the door panels is everything's molded plastic and then they have this like hydro foam, I think it's called. Yeah, it's like the stuff you find like on jet skis. Yeah, on jet skis, uh, hydro foam, hydro turf, whatever it's called. And they also have the speakers integrated. So they made the door width enough to fit the speakers. These are made by Kicker. I don't think you probably fit on uh, some of the other brands, but these definitely yeah. fit. Kicker's good though, right? Yeah, thin, they're thinner. They're thinner? Yeah. And the seat, sit in the seat, we'll see how you feel. So CJ is a big guy. Three billies. Three billies, easily. Damn, boy. On a bad day, he's three billies. And uh, what do you think? Dude, bro, from your car to this car, you got headroom for days, bro. Look at the headroom. Feet room, feet room is about the same as a, as a, as a can -am. Feet room? But the difference is you have a, a farther. I think the cluster, the cluster's cool, but it's kind of low, no? Yeah. They should probably make it similar to that one, unless maybe a good daylight fix it, I'm not sure. Obviously, uh, customers will probably uh, put their two cents in. It looks like it's a pre-molded for vents. There's going to be an uh, enclosed version with vents. There's a vents on the side, the center, and there's one on the driver's side. And the plastic's really nice. The finish of the plastic is kind of like the Can-Am, where it's got that carbon fiber texture. And then another webbed uh, uh, texture here. This is cool, dude. You have everything integrated, like the rugged. You have the push the talk. Let me jump on that side. Mind if I jump in, sir? Oh, go ahead. Sorry about that. Um, that would be. What? All right, so we're gonna sit in here. Oh, dude! In the daytime, this is a different machine. This, the, the way this is set up, it's like it's pretty cool because I mean it comes factory. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't have to worry about adding shit and everything. Well, I think what's cool about them is that you can purchase it and order it with the options, and then they'll install it for you before they make the machine. That's assuming you pre-ordered. But what's cool about this is, yeah, the integration of everything. I mean, none of the other brands really offer this. No. And you gotta go out the market to get, you know, everything set up in one. This, uh, this is, they have a, a shifter for the actual transmission and then a, sh a shifter to put into four wheel drive. So this is, uh, you know, park, reverse, neutral, one through uh, three. And then at the bottom here, this is gonna put you into four wheel drive. Um, I wonder if it's like a four high or four low, or it's just four and then low and then high, yeah. right? Something like that. Uh, they got the controller here for the audio system by kicker obviously the rugged radios here they got the m1 and the intercom system i like how they do the flush mounts for the uh yeah. for the plugins for the headsets i think it's pretty well laid out dude i mean both of us are sitting in this car this is like and we got a lot of room in here i dude. think still though it's probably like closer to a can than an rzr yeah oh yeah uh, definitely seating position and then like room yeah elbow room <laughs> i mean and the razor would be like this dude. yeah and the razor we're touching elbows Gay! 
which hey man our are cool i don't know about the pro xp we yeah. should mention it they, that's they, probably turbo s they might have a lot more room now yeah but definitely there's a lot of room in this car this yeah. room this car has a lot of headroom and when you're looking at it from the front it does not look tall at all no nah, dude and the visibility is pretty good yeah. too what you, do you think have, you have like three full fists above your yeah. Well, I'm a short guy. You're taller than me. Well, yeah. You're what, 6'3"? Yeah, let's yeah. see it. It looks like you're like... <laughs> in there, in there. Hey, these seats are comfortable. Hey, this is not anybody's brand seats. This is their seats. Speed makes these seats. They make everything on this machine. I think the only thing that they don't really make is got to be like the radio systems. Kicker and rugged radios are on, on, on board. But besides that, pretty much everything is Speed UTV, so... Really tight, All right, the real test, Chris, sit in the back, dude. I'll sit in the back, bro. The yeah. real test. That's the real test. Hey, real quick, let me see it. All the doors have these handles in them right here. So if you're a uh, sitting passenger, you grab on here and you grab on there, very similar to a Can Am. Let's see uh, how CJ fits. Damn, boy, he fit! Well, I mean, this is probably a narrow seat. Yeah, I don't, I don't really fit back here. Yeah, you probably have to move the seat forward. That's the only way you're gonna fit. Yeah. So then the, the, the back seating has got to be closer to like the Polaris or Turbo S. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, realistically, if we really were going on a ride, I mean, I can technically fit back here, no problem. Yeah. There is not really much leg room for a big guy, but at the same time. And you're a big guy, dude. You three freaking billions, homie. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, what do you want them to make it? For a freaking giant? It's pretty cool. I mean, it feels yeah. like a roller coaster. I wonder right if there's any heat issues because, you know, the radiator is right here in the intercooler. Obviously, the heat goes outwards towards the back, but still, while you're at idle, it might get a little hot. Not sure. Then again, they said that the radiator and all that is very big, and maybe, maybe it won't be so much, so much of a problem when it comes to the heat. But let's check out the front suspension a little bit and what it looks like. This machine's 77 inches wide, which is really really wide so it might not fit in all the toy haulers out there it's gonna be very specific and obviously you're gonna measure what you own but let's look at the front suspension here uh, obviously double wishbone uh, upper and lower the tie rod is on the front because the steering gear is in the front and it's integrated with the bulkhead uh, I know there's a different name for it I don't know what they call it but it's it's integrated right here in this machine excuse me cast piece of aluminum there will be billet versions for like the race teams and uh, if you want to purchase a race version but this is in cast um it's very nice the only thing that i was worried about or thought about as an owner of a utv is if you hit something will it affect anything because literally the bolts for the a-arms are right here there's no crush zone but then again this is going to help a lot with um you know coming into a, a dip or coming into a, a whoop or anything the tire is going to hit first and not the fascia so let's check out the lighting the lighting is really, really unique to this machine everything is custom made as far as the lighting um it's all in this uh, neon style of lighting they have their turn signals built in this is all white light and the speed logo also lights up and then here you have your traditional halogen style bulbs or leds here in the uh, the main headlamp and then this one's equipped with a light bar that I really love the way they integrated this because they have it on brackets that are bolts on. So if you don't want to have the light bar on or maybe you want to add this later, it's very simple. You buy the brackets and they're integrated really nice. You know, they're not ugly brackets like you see on other uh, manufacturers or aftermarket uh, companies. So they're really nice. It's a radius light bar, which looks really clean. Uh, we'll probably go check out the back as far as lighting goes. Let's take a look. So these are pre-production models. I want to make it very clear. They're pre-production. There are some quirks right now. But here's another one. This would be the uh, hole where they integrate a chase light maybe or maybe a third brake light, I'm not sure. But that's obviously somewhere they're gonna put a light in there. Very nice. It might interfere with that mount, not sure what they have, but LEDs can be very slim. So, uh, and in the back, more integration when it comes to uh, turn signals. And obviously this is gonna be very similar to the front where it lights up, I believe in red, but don't quote me on that. And then the center is gonna be, I'm sure, a uh, tail lamp and brake light. So that's really cool. A, a tow hitch on there oh so yeah like for a lot of overlanders or whatever i mean if you really want to put like a bike rack or something like that or even like a flat a thing to put rack. your grill you know what i mean like you go to laughlin or you go to hey you'd be like a, a wil or be like wilkie and pull yeah. the little jet boat yeah you, you want to go somewhere you want to be by yourself you want to be private you want to just haul something around you have a lot of bedrooms hey. or some bedroom timmy can use this for work dude yeah you could put yeah. you could put a rack in the back and put an ice chest or put a 
a barbecue or something back here, dude. Hey, we'll be trying to convince Timmy he needs a speedy TV in his life. Yeah. I think he he don't listen to me. I think he needs a two-seater, though. Hello. All right, guys, real quick, let's talk about the suspension because this is very different than what you traditionally see on a UTV. There are no radius rods of any sort like you see on a Polaris or a Can-Am. We're looking at a, um, what do they call this? Well, it's like a, it's like a double pivot point. It's, it's like what you find like in a, a trophy truck or like a buggy. Yeah. So it's a sort of J-arm, but there's two mounting points at the front and that locates the arms for the movement. So you don't need radius rods. And then um, obviously you got your axle here. Dude, this axle is so beefy, dude. This thing is really thick in comparison to the other brands. This brakes on all four corners that are massive. This machine does weigh uh, quite a bit more, I'm assuming, than the other ones. But um, there's a reason for that. They make some quality stuff. So CVT cover and aluminum, we showed you guys that uh, recently. The shocks, again, are freaking humongous as far as thickness and diameter go. Uh, the exhaust, I want to show you guys the exhaust right here. Dude, this is a really nice tip that they did. You see that like on buggies and whatnot. <laughs> hi, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Looking good. Connor, great. Doing great, nice to meet you. Carter? Connor. Connor, sorry. Yeah. Da, 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 da. It's the motherfucking D-O-double-G. Could I question you a little bit? Yeah, what you got? All right, so we got Connor. He's uh, nice enough to show us around or give us some details on the machine. What what setup is this for the rear suspension? It's not very... So it's a true trailing arm. This is what you see on class 1, class 10 cars. Okay, okay. Um, so we've done away with the radius rods. What we've done that makes the car really different is as it travels up and down in the suspension, you don't gain camber or any toe in the car. And it changes really, the track width too. Changes the track width on like your can or your Polaris yeah. out there. And what happens is through the big bumps is that track width has to come back out as you're compressing or coming down in the suspension, right? So it has to choose a direction. That's why these cars, you see them start swapping through the whoops because the back end is having to choose which direction and it's dancing it around. wants to scoot the car. Since ours travels flat through it, I mean, we're doing 65 miles an hour in a Can-Am and 80 in this down, down in the whoops. And it's uh, it's sounds, night and day. That sounds fun. Night right. and day different. Three-speed yeah. transmission in the car. So we saw that. Low yeah. high cruise with the speed key activated. Is it uh, on the fly? I don't yeah. remember if they yeah, uh, so did that. Yeah, so it'll be full shift on the fly, which means which is nuts. You can go uh, roll up to your rock crawl section, click it down into low, and climb up, click it back into high, and. And the other levers for the four-wheel drive, I'm assuming. Correct. So, okay. But our goal is to, to remove all the, the electronic issues with cars, right? So we're hydraulic power steering, which means that we don't have failures in our power steering unit. We can actually scoot the whole car over with the, the power steering. We're true alternator, which means that we're not relying on a stator. We can run plenty of power on the car. And everything we do is to design a car that really we can use in any environment and not have massive failures. A couple really cool things we do is everything is transferable at least left to right, if not all, all four corners. So like the rear arm is the same left and right. You flip it over to go to the other side, same with the front, upper and lower control arm. Yeah, so if you guys follow the speed presentations that they have, they go over all this stuff and a lot of the owners have done the uh, pre-orders know all about the machine. And that's one of the cool things that I thought was really cool. You can swap left to right. And the same thing with the front A-arms. Correct. Upper yeah. and lower, or is it just the lowers? Uh, upper and lower both go on either side. That's cool, same dude. Same hub bearings, rotors, yeah. everything is identical. On so if you're a race team, you only got to carry one of each. Yep. So they work on each either side. Um, the axles, is there any issues with maybe plunge? I know the track width isn't changing, but no, so they're kind of floating in there. No, so it's a dual plunge axle, which means it floats at both sides. Uh, we've had no issues with axles, and something we've done really cool is we've built slipper clutches into both our front and rear diff, which allows us to, if you take the a, shock, uh, take the shock load out of it, so you're not breaking axles, you're not breaking belts anymore. It, it basically acts as a slipper clutch for the entire uh, drive unit and allows us to uh, keep trucking along without breaking stuff. Okay, the drivetrain, I don't know much about it, but you can see it, it looks very well built as far as the, yeah. the CVT housing is an aluminum, the turbo's on the back to so get the heat out. Exactly. Uh, one question I thought is the radiator. You think maybe at idle, some of the passengers might get some of that heat or is no, there gonna so be a screen there or something? Or it, not a screen, but like a- screen on the front. These are three massive fans back here. If it hits a temperature, it actually pulls all the heat out of the back of the car. So uh, we've designed a couple of cool options, a heat and soundproof kit that uh, also dampens that heat in the cab. At idle, it's not going to get any warmer than, than your Canon Polaris. All right, here's one question. 
I have an order machine. I was very curious on the enclosed model, but there hasn't been very many talks about that enclosed model anymore. Yeah. What's the timetable for that? I know the timetables are, are very iffy and... Timetables are tough, but so our goal is to get through all of our open caps first. So okay. I have a, a ton of pre-orders, a, a little over 5,000 so far uh, pre-ordered. That doesn't include dealer uh, commitments for the year, but... I thought we were closer, I thought you guys were closer to 10. That's, that includes dealer commitments oh, okay. for the year. So um, we're going to work through those. Enclosed cab, you'll see probably late next summer is my estimate. That's that's just a guess at this point, but we're uh, we're working towards it. It's still in our priority list, but we want to make sure we get customers who have pre-ordered open cabs at this point. And uh, these are pre-production models, but the El Jefe is the first ones you guys are pretty much pumping out, right? Yeah, so we'll do a batch of at least 800 El Jefes. That's a, a batch of 400 and 400. That's our, our first runs of cars. From there, we'll switch over. Uh, as of now, our plan is to switch over to the Diablos and do a couple runs of those, and then start flipping back and forth as uh, as the timetable needs. Anything else you want to point out that's very different than any other machine? Yeah, let's check out the front bulkhead here. So I was talking about the bulkhead a few minutes ago, but Connor obviously is the expert. He's gonna show us a little bit of what's going on. So first of all, we're a shock to bottom car, which means we have much more stroke length in the track in the travel, and we can uh, create position dent or position dampening dependent on where we are in the travel at full bump we have a hydraulic bump stop built in so it's never going to hard bottom out on the bottom of the shock it, uh, it it's just to get a lot stiffer at the very exactly. few inch, last few inches of stroke full bulkhead uh, with massive ears so i was seeing that That's, you, you yeah. break the you break the ears of this car off then you probably have more problems with just wrecked. the ears yeah uh, these are chromoly arms so that's factory, factory not an option not an option everything comes like this from the factory what we've done is built you a car at the manufacturer at the factory that is ready to go i want you to hop in your car, car and go play in the desert i don't need you to to sit at the dealership for an extra two or three weeks to get your long traveler installed or your shock therapy uh, kit installed they, these are all things that we do direct from us. We partner with the right people to make the car amazing from the factory. The goal is, I'm assuming, to make it ready to ride off the dealer floor or from you guys without having to go to the aftermarket. Exactly. I one thing one thing I wanted to mention on these arms, um, they are welded by a robot, and that robot needs a raise because I couldn't pull up. I couldn't even pull these welds off. Pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah pretty so. good for a goddamn robot. Robot welding, they, they're doing a great job. Look at the button. That can't yeah, be this robot. Whole thing is no way. Is that crazy, right? right? Full robot welding. Connor, you're lying that. to me, brother. I'm not lying, I promise. These are done by a robot. They're dropping dimes on those, man. Oh, yeah. So, uh, do not look at the, uh, don't look at your arms on your Can Am because you will not see this. Uh, and not, you know, taking shots on Can Am. Obviously, I have a Can Am, but. This is next level stuff and what they're building is uh, heavy duty. We're looking at the hub or the spindle right now. Um, what would you call this? Is it, obviously it's, it's dual captured on both sides. Yeah, so everything we do is in dual shear. Um, this is our full hub assembly. And again, going back to everything's the same on all four corners. Same rotors, same calipers, same hubs, same wheel the bearings. The hubs are the same? Uh, sorry, hubs the same left to right. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Um, and then everything is How just- about the uh, axles? Left to right. Axles are same left to right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's nice. Um, are these like your traditional Heim? Are they rubber, rubber insulated or like a rubber um, dust boots or yeah, what so is Yeah, so rubber that? dust boots. It's going to be a traditional Heim that okay. you see on a trophy okay. truck. And, I like that though. I like the, that they put all that because a lot of guys that run Heims on their aftermarket uh, rods, tie rods, all that stuff, you'll see that grit gets in there and it wears them out a little bit faster. So it's nice to have a rubber boot on there. And the shocks are freaking massive. They're ridiculous. So, yeah, very interesting. 3.25. Yeah, 3.25 shocks. You're obviously. making me want one. I can't afford one. Uh, Come what's, find me. We'll get you, get you set up. Anything underneath here that we should be looking at? Nothing. Just it's cover. It's pretty empty in there, yeah. Okay. So, we're, since we're a rear radiator, I mean, hydraulic, nothing crazy in here, though. We were talking earlier, pretty much everything is made by you guys. The seats, the steering wheels. Right, uh, the, the only thing that we saw was just the kicker system and the rugged radios. Exactly. But so we've partnered with Kicker, they do a great job for us, and uh, they've done our stereo unit, rugged or PCI for your radio intercom kit, and they also do our pumpers. So uh, everything else is done in house and really designed uh, with partnership with the best people to, to help us develop the car. Well, I've been following along, and it, it's it's something else, it's a different machine. This is a step above a UTV, it's a UTV, obviously, but. 
it's, it's on the trophy truck yeah that's why that's what i always say and i believe after seeing it hopefully this uh, carries on to the production models um there's some quirks they're gonna work out i'm sure these are pre-production again but it's looking promising um it looks really nice so connor thank you, thank you. I, appreciate I appreciate it and i appreciate you man uh, taking the time to uh get you on video here and give us some some schooling on the new speed utv absolutely happy to help and this is 77 inches wide right it is yes sir that's fucking that's an animal uh i had one more question i already forgot what it was dude what about the what about the like tire packages i know a lot of people like to run different wheels like billet, like different billet wheels like that yeah they, it's they a, could bolt up do you have you guys, you guys have like your own pattern it's a four by 156 so it matches a polaris bolt pattern. Polaris bolt pattern. yeah we've done a couple of cool things that make our car our wheel work even better so we're actually hub centric with our wheels we have a lip on on our hub that allows it to uh, support the load of the the wheel versus it being all on the lugs but any aftermarket Polaris wheel will pull up well sounds good thank you again and uh hopefully we'll see you guys real soon thank you all right we're gonna cap off uh the speed utv video with what i think is one of the baddest machines here these are stadium trophy trucks are they called stadium trophy trucks or just stadium trucks? Stadium super trucks. Stadium super trucks. And these machines are uh, really badass. We'll put a clip in here. One of my favorite clips ever. Wee! <laughs> wee! Wee! wee. <laughs> we'll put one of my favorite clips ever of these things jumping on the track. It's uh, pretty insane what they do. They got a bunch of crazy racers out there. Uh, big names uh, racing with Robbie Gordon because he's always in it and his son Max. And they do some pretty cool stuff. So, um, like I said, thanks for watching this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. And uh, shout out to Speed TV, man. They're making some crazy stuff. The brand in general, Speed. Some amazing stuff. All right, guys, if you made it this far in the video, then you want to know my opinions on the machine and I'm going to give them to you. So what do I think about the overall design and the suspension, the interior, the size of the machine? Uh, we're going to go based off El Jefe because I haven't seen the other machines. Uh, there was a two seater there, but it was a carbon fiber edition, no engine or trans. But um, let's talk about El Jefe. So how does it compare to say maybe an X3 Max? or a Pro XP 4 seat. Um, I think it's comparable. I think it fits right in the middle. Um, I'm not 100% on the wheelbase, but it looks to be between both the Pro XP and the X3. It's definitely shorter than my machine. Um, and it's kind of evident in the interior room for the second roll when you guys saw CJ sit down. Uh, it was a little evident there. Uh, I don't think that's much of a big deal for me personally. I never have any adults in the back seat besides my wife, but she's little, so I don't have really issues with that. The spacing of the interior is actually really good on the front row, and that's probably the most important part. Obviously, some of you guys are bigger and are gonna be driving this machine. Um, I think the layout of the interior is really nice. The only thing I kind of didn't care for was, um, and this is me nitpicking, I mean, my machine doesn't come with any of these features. So on the El Jefe, you have the option to have uh, dual screens, one that's gonna be right in front of the driver, and another one for your passenger, which can work for navigation and music control, a bunch of other stuff. Um, the one for the passenger is kind of low and I kind of didn't like that because you kind of have to look down to look at the screen Again, I'm nitpicking here uh, But then again, I saw a video of the guys using the machine the test mule and they had a low rants kind of high up Which means you could probably run both if you have the low rants up high You can still see maybe you know visually see the uh, the navigation screen down low So that was a little quirk. I didn't really care for but the rest of the center console the whole setup and then the steering wheel, how the uh, instrument cluster goes up and down with the steering wheel, kind of like on the can -Am. Um, I really like that. I like how the design and the layout is. I like how the center portion is kind of faced towards the driver a little bit, so you can have access to the controls a lot easier. Now, as you guys know, the can -Ams don't really have paneling set up for radios. You have to buy aftermarket you know, panels to make. Um, and you guys probably saw one of my previous videos. So it's nice that they kind of have that already set up for your uh, head unit for your audio system and for the radio systems from PCI or Rugged. Um, I think it's really cool. That's really, really something that no one's integrating into the uh, industry right now as far as UTVs. And I think it's a good start for anybody that purchases the El Jefe to be able to already have that section for your radio system. So uh, the dash is awesome. Uh, the door panels, the interior door panel, the paneling on the inside is really cool. It has that hydro foam or hydro turf that they call it. Um, very similar to the Wave Runners and the jet skis. They have that padding in the back. 
it's anti-slip and water resistant doesn't really soak in water it's not like a fabric or anything like that so i really like that it's a you know a point for your elbows to hit just in case you hit your elbows i don't know um there's also a spot for the speaker which is actually really cool because everybody that buys a rzr or a can-am you have that issue where you have to buy pods and put them all sorts of weird ways i know the pro xp did do a good job integrating the speakers in the front and in the back with the rockford kits that they have but i think this is actually better in the doors i mean it's just like you know my truck that has the speakers in the doors um, i didn't see any speakers on the dash but that's okay on the doors is really cool um obviously i didn't try to see how loud it was but um I mean, it should be sufficient with four or five speakers. So uh, another thing that was cool is that when the doors opened up, that the speakers will now be kind of pointing towards the exterior of the vehicle and you can have a little bit of an audio system for the camp. And I thought that was really nice because um, Can-Am came out with that roof that kind of goes up. And I don't really care for that because uh, a lot of us change the cages on the Can-Ams. Back to the doors, the El Jefe being a four door, the front doors open up like a traditional vehicle, like an automotive vehicle, and then the rear doors do open up suicide. Um, the problem is they weren't opening very well at all. I couldn't even open the right rear door. And again, they're pre-production, so I understand. And there's no way they're gonna release vehicles like that for anybody that was crying on the internet. Look, that sucks because exactly two years ago when they announced the cars at the San Show and they had that, you know, Articat that was all hooked up, Speedcat. Um, it had the same exact problem. The doors didn't open up very good and they kind of hit each other. So hopefully they address that. I'm sure they will because they do not want to release a machine with that problem because people are going to rip on them as they already are. So uh, that was a little quirk they're going to fix, I'm sure. Um, I think one of the guys told us that the frame had possibly shrunk. Maybe in the welding process, some things were not exact to where it needed to be. Or maybe the door panels were thicker than they needed to be. Um, I don't know. It's just speculation. Maybe they just made that up, but the doors didn't close right. Um, the seats, freaking amazing. If you guys want aftermarket seats for your side-by-side, -side, your RZR, your X3, you're looking at Simpson, you're looking at PRP, you're looking at Hunter Safety Products, all these other brands, Triple X, um, and you're spending $1,000 on a pair of seats. Add a bench seat or another pair of seats to the back, that's another $800, $900, and that's just stuff that you don't want to be spending money on. Um, I want to buy a side-by-side -side one day and not have to add much and that's what we're looking at with this new speed UTV So the seats that they had on display for you to sit on kind of like the PRP uh, Video I did where they just have seats everywhere. They have so many options for you guys before you order your vehicle You can sit in the seat and for me I got a normal frame I guess or you could get a wide frame and a tall frame a seat and the CJ was fitting better on some seats than it was on others so that's really cool that they offer that as an option and the seats themselves are really comfortable they hug you they have really nice bolsters a lot better than the Can-Am seat and I think the Can-Am seat is pretty good from the factory uh, a lot better than the Turbo S seat um, but yeah the seats are really amazing um, and then another thing that I saw that uh, was really cool is the steering wheel I mean this could be a real small thing for a lot of people but um, you don't really get a quality steering wheel on a side-by-side -side nowadays uh, the Turbo S that came out with a Sparkle, I think, and that was a decent steering wheel. And then the Pro XP has a cool steering wheel because it's got some buttons, but it's not really a race oriented steering wheel. Uh, and a lot of us have to go out to market to get that, whether that be NRG, MPI, Sparkle, which CJ just bought a Sparkle steering wheel and a quick release, and that cost them a few hundred bucks. So the fact that they give you this really nice steering wheel, it's kind of like a D shape, kind of square shape, um, I think that's really nice. Just another reason why some of us should consider this machine in the future. The rear seats, um, same quality as the front seats. The only problem with the second row is that you don't have very much leg room. Kind of similar to a RZR, an XP, or even a Turbo S. Uh, very much the same thing. Um, besides that, the interior uh, paneling and products all around that were pretty decent. I mean, on par, I would say, when it comes to a Can-Am. The plastics, the fit and finish was actually pretty decent. The only fit and finish was the doors, like I said, uh, but supposedly they're gonna address that. All right, so let's talk about the exterior. There's some things that I don't like, but most of the stuff on the machine I really do like. Let me talk about what I do like. The front end, I think is really nice. Now that's gonna be hit or miss for some of you guys, but I love the way the lights work and how they look at night, as well as how they look in the daytime. I like how it has that smiley face. I don't know, that's just me. Um, I really like how um, they integrated the lights from one panel to another to make that smiley face. The SS logo lights up, that's really cool. Reminds me of my truck because my Silver Auto Bolt tie lights up. I'm a sucker for lights, so what can I say? Um, besides that, I know it does look very similar to the Articat. 
and uh, that's a re there's a reason for that. Robbie kind of helped design that machine, but on this machine, he's going all out with his designs because there's no big wigs from Articat telling him what to do. So although they look similar, they're not. Uh, they're completely different machines. Similar designs, but completely different machines. Nothing is interchangeable. So uh, the rear bed, I really like the rear bed. It's amazing. You can fit a full 35 inch tire in the back of the bed, which is nuts. There's people out there uh, with side-by-sides trying to figure out how to store everything, whether that's tools, your spare, and we're putting you know shelves on top of shelves. We're putting stuff on the roof. And honestly, you don't need to do any of that with the Speed UTV because you have such a big portion of bed space dedicated to storage. With the wheel there, like there's so much more room. Um, and I really like that. I kind of like it because it looks kind of like a truck. So, um, and we'll get to that in a second, the looks of a truck. Um, the tail lights are really cool. The tailgate is really cool as well. Uh, the fact that you can open the tailgate and kind of sit in there is really nice. I couldn't open the tailgate, not sure why, but I'm sure it will open eventually. Uh, back to it looking like a truck. The bed, how do I say this? The bed looks very proportional to the 4C El Jefe. Um, the cage to the bed, everything looks proportional. And I love the way the El Jefe looks. Uh, the body on the side, I like it too. Um, most of us with the UTVs on these X3s, we put these doors that kind of sit higher than the factory ones. And that's because I know I, I like the look, you know, I don't need to have it down low. I'm not really rock crawling. So um, if the door covers up more, uh, it gives you a sense of security when you're sitting in the machine. And same thing with the El Jefe, it's got that, you know, high door, um, which might not be good for rock crawling, but for my style of desert riding and, um, you know, open desert, I like that. So, so I like the body styling on the sides on the El Jefe. The machine that I don't like the body styling on has got to be the El Diablo. Because for whatever reason, the proportions of the machine, the cage to the bed, and that long stretch of body from the rear quarter all the way to the fender, it just looks too big. So um, personally, I was going to go 4C anyways. The day comes I can afford one of those machines uh, because I do want a 2C, but I don't think I like the 2C from speed. Um, it just doesn't look uh, proportioned you know correctly so i don't know it's just my personal preference the el jefe looks amazing though to me and i like how it looks and if i were to buy one i would buy that machine so so the exterior is pretty cool you know um other things about the machine when it comes to the chassis and the cage the chassis is next level in comparison to anything that can polaris kawasaki or any other manufacturers are making it is heavy duty um and that's going to also add to the weight of the machine but we're already adding weight on these machines as it is. I mean, I had to put out the market cage because the factory cage had a tweak in it from when my wife's cousin rolled it over. Um, same thing with CJ. His machine had a tweak in it. We had to get it out the market cage. This machine is so heavy duty and reinforced when it comes to not just the cage, but the chassis itself. It is really, really nice to not have to worry about adding gussets or adding stiffeners or braces. I have two, four, over $1,200 just in bracing, shock tower brace, gusset kits, um, the trailing arm brace, and then the upper shock brace, and then not to mention all the gusseting in the back where the radius rods are on the 6.3. So the fact that you don't have to do any of that is just a huge in money savings, as well as you're confident that the machine's not gonna fall apart on you and you gotta do a frame swap, which sucks. And I wouldn't wanna be a part of doing one of those um, because it's time consuming. And I wouldn't have to want to take it to a dealer because I don't like anybody touching my machine as well as they never do the job correctly as it would be coming from the factory. So uh, the chassis is really strong. It looks strong. A um, lot of reinforcement in many sections. A lot of triangulation. Uh, the way the shocks are mounted is really nice. The cage itself, um, I only will have one problem with the cage and that is that they're all going to look the same because nobody's going to want to change your cage out. You don't have to. Uh, the cage is really strong and reinforced. Um, lots of V-bars and treasure bars in the front. I think they have them in the middle. I don't even remember. The point is it's really strong. They have what they call the spine, which goes from the center of the intrusion all the way back in through the roof. So there's just many reasons I see this machine being a good purchase, even if it costs five to $7,000 more than what's out there currently. So on the video, I did say that the uh, visibility was pretty good. Um, after I sat on it for a while, I kind of changed my mind on that. It's a little short. And then I think what added to that was the light bar was positioned low and you didn't, you could actually see the light bar from the interior cockpit. And I kind of, I kind of think that affected it. So maybe with that off, it would be a little bit better. 
Um, personally, I don't need red light bars anymore. I don't want to use the one I have. It's really for looks because the ambers are just killer. You have to have ambers. All right, guys, let's talk about the suspension a little bit. The front suspension is extremely impressive. Uh, double wishbone, like on X3, but it is a lot wider. I'm talking about 77 inches wide, and this is with a stock offset that's pretty much six to one or something close to that. I don't know the exact offset, but there's no there's no width being added by the offset of the rims. It's all suspension. The arms are extremely long. The shocks are bolted to the lower A arm, just like a trophy truck. Um, the steering is actually on the front versus on the Can-Ams and the Polaris's. It's on the rear. Uh, some say that's better for um, leverage when you hit something. It's pulling on the tie rods versus pushing them in if they were on the backside. Uh, so design attributes that are similar to Trophy Truck because Robbie Gordon has that background in racing in Baja for such a long time in his Trophy Truck. And the front suspension is just amazing. The arms are chromoly. They're MIG welded by a robot, but that freaking robot is doing an insane job at welding. It actually was really, really cool to see how well the welds were on the lower arm and upper arm. Now, welds are questionable on the frame in many areas, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but again, the front suspension is just, I'm very impressed with it. And then the tabs for the uh, aluminum bulkhead that were the arms attached to, they're super thick. I don't see anybody breaking those unless you really total the car. Like if you break those, you probably have a lot more problems and hopefully you have your seatbelts on. Um, so besides that, the front suspension is really amazing. The rear suspension is also, you know, very heavy duty and beefy and looks very promising. I don't know how well it's going to perform. Now the first clips in this video, you can see the car going through the whoops. It looks very controlled. Um, I don't know how well it's going to do because a rear train arm lengthened the way that they are on the Can-Ams, on the Polaris's, that actually helps a lot um, in many areas when it comes to suspension geometry. But then again, one thing that's huge with this new J-Arm setup that they have on the Speed UTV is there's no track lift change because there's no radius rods. So the wheels are literally going up and down when you're going through the whoops, which is huge. This is gonna help you not dance around those whoops. The rear suspension should be settled and should just be going up and down. Whereas in a Can-Am, I've done videos going over the whoops and I can see the track lift change on the front and on the back and it's going like this in a semicircle, I guess you could say. And that causes all sorts of issues. Think about it, the wheel is fighting itself, trying to figure out where it wants to be in the track width. And it's just, it causes issues with, uh, with uh, bucking and just jittery suspension feel in the back. Uh, a lot of people say on the Polaris's because it changes the toe so much. It feels very unstable, uh, and that's something that is going to be eliminated with this J-Arm setup that they have. By the way, I don't know if it's called a J-Arm setup, I'm just calling it that. Um, so that's really cool. The shocks on the rear are not as long as shocks that you find on the X3. What that means, I have no idea, I'm not an expert when it comes to suspension, uh, but they did a really good job, apparently, in tuning the shock to have proper bump stage throughout the stroke. So. Um, it's you know, we're, we get to see this machine actually being in the hands of consumers for them to give their opinion Because there's a lot of guys that own one of these x3s and they loved it through the whoops And they're gonna own a speed UTV and they're gonna give us their opinions on how it floats over the whoops in comparison So so I mean we get to see that um, engine and trans um, I can't say much so the front differential is built into that bulkhead that we showed you guys uh, in the video uh, the rear drivetrain is a drivetrain it's all aluminum Two cylinder motor with a snail in the back for the boosties and um, it looks promising. That is one of the things I think is going to be the uh, true tale of the Speed UTV. How long is that motor going to last? DRP makes engines for planes. They know a thing or two about engines and people are boosting these things to the moon. I'm talking about over 500 horsepower which is nuts. Uh, the Speed UTV engine, it's made from the ground up. They designed it. They worked with their partners to make this engine. Who knows how well it's gonna hold up? I really don't know. And um, that's gonna be something that only time tells. And I'm sure they're logging in a bunch of miles on the machine. And hopefully they, uh, they are confident with the machine as far as the engine and trans. And hopefully we don't see issues. I'd like, I'd like to see this machine come out and really uh, wreak havoc on the, uh, on the deserts out there and uh, make the other OEMs see it and think to themselves, hey, we got a, we got a competition here. Um, more on the drivetrain, uh, the axles were really beefy. The exhaust looks really nice. I know one of them, I don't even think had an exhaust on it or they were putting it on last second. Again, they were doing this all last second to get it ready for the show. 
Uh, one thing that I did notice is the uh, the plumbing for all of the engine uh, didn't look like uh, production ready plumbing. It looks like they just put it together last second. Um, the engines were running. There is video of them running. But I did notice that the routing of the hoses was a little off, which you wouldn't expect from the OEMs. Um, and again, that's something that's pre-production and I'm sure they're gonna uh, uh, correct. All right, so final thoughts on the overall machine. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna miss a bunch of stuff, but it does look promising. 310 horsepower from the engine uh, with the speed key, which is which is a lot and would be industry leading when once they exist. Um, how's it gonna fare against the other machines when it comes to racing? So it's definitely gonna be good competition for the other OEMs. Now can and Polaris aren't gonna sleep. Polaris, they have their Pro R kind of just sitting. They haven't announced it yet, but we all know it's there. And can -Am doesn't like to stay behind and I'm sure they're cooking up something. Um, when that's gonna be, who knows. But if the Speed UTV launches in early 2022, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how it does in the racing program. So um, let me know what I missed in the comment section down below. Uh, definitely something different man it's it's really really cool i would like to own one if i could afford it but uh maybe in the future so now let's talk about a little bit of the drama that uh was quickly put on social media right after the sand show from people taking pictures uh there was missing bolts in the cage the bolts that were present in the cage some of them were not even reaching the nylock uh really poor welds in some of the sections where there's multiple joints multiple tubes on the frame even a picture of a bolt to fill in the gap on a weld on the frame um what else uh the valve steps were hitting the brake calipers which uh suck to see because i really do think this machine is very impressive uh but i do tend to believe they're gonna fix all these issues they came out on their next presentation and pretty much spoke about all the issues that people had commented on and they're on it they're gonna work on it they're gonna fix it and I tend to believe them because there's so many things that they added to this machine that weren't even promised when they announced the machine. There was a different, you know, Speedy TV when it was first announced at the Sand Show two years ago. And what is out there present, what is out there currently as a pre-production is miles ahead of what was announced two years ago. So um, I do think they're gonna fix all those problems with the frame, with the valve stem here in the caliper, with the bolts in the cage. They're not gonna release that model like that in that condition to uh consumers i really don't think so um i'm sure there was a couple other issues that i missed that people posted but again it's pre-production and anybody out there posting that kind of stuff they're just they're just trying to drag robbie's name through the dirt and speed utv's name through the dirt uh do i think it's a little embarrassing to bring that to the sand show like that a little but uh, at the end of the day i do understand they were rushing to get these machines to the sand show uh four of them in total when it comes to the four seats and i think they did a good job presenting these to the consumers to show them this is where you're gonna get so um that's it that's all i have for you guys in this video i appreciate you guys for watching if you stayed this long and uh, make sure you like this video for the algorithm i'm about to knock out because it's already late we'll see you guys in the next one stay dirty and yeah we'll see what happens with this al jefe it's pretty cool really nice machine we'll see